So is your sat-nav gone bad? Is it now showing your vehicle in the completely wrong location? Or maybe it's working fine, but you want to know how to fix it if it does go wrong? In this video, I'm going to show you the cheap option to try first before you do anything else. How's it going? I'm Kev, welcome to North Coast Workshop where you'll find content on car modifications and DIY. Today what we're doing is covering the faulty GPS antenna on my Mark II Leon. I will admit, mine's not faulty anymore, it's working fine, but about two years ago, I went out to the car one day, jumped in, turned the sat nav on to actually go somewhere and program it. I didn't recognise my location at all, so I googled a few of the names online to find out where it thought it was, and it turned out it was Norway. Yeah, something wrong there. I saw this issue, I thought it could either be that the head unit was faulty, needing replaced, that the GPS antenna could be faulty on the roof, or that it just come loose on the connections. And on the Mark II Leon, I think the Mark V Golf as well, it's connected to the back of the head unit and it's also connected up under the head lining just below where the aerial is on the roof. Now this will apply to any car, not just the Mark II Leon. What you want to do first is you want to check connections. Before you replace any parts, make sure all the connections are in properly. I had every intention of doing this out on the drive in the daylight, but it's getting dark already and it's getting really cold as well. So I'm going to pull the car in the garage, we're going to take apart a few bits of dash, get the head unit out, check the connection at the back, and then we'll talk through the rest. Okay, so hopefully you can see the image okay. I'll do a wee behind the scenes picture on screen just now just to show you what the setup's like. It's a bit makeshift in here in the garage in the dark. So tools you'll need, you'll need a T25 Torx bit to get the actual head unit off and you'll need a trim removal tool for this trim, which I'll show you just now. Now you're looking to take out the four Torx screws holding the head unit in place. Now they never get much slack on these wires. It's always the same. It's just enough for you to get your hand in to take the connections off. I'll do a quick show of what the back of it's like, you can see in there. And yeah, it's the blue connector, that's the one for the GPS. And yeah, the mag connector was fine in place securely, and the one in the roof lining at the back of the car, it was fine as well. Next thing was to order a replacement GPS antenna. Now I looked online for this antenna, the thing is it incorporates the DAB radio, normal radio antenna and also incorporates GPS in one piece. This makes it quite expensive obviously, brand new from the dealer, it's over 100 quid. I did see a few ones online for second hand for maybe 40, 50 quid, but I decided to go just for a separate unit, separate GPS unit, since the plug on the back of the head unit was single by itself. And at the time of me having my issue, two years ago, it was about seven quid online on eBay. I'll obviously leave a link down below for something similar to the one I used for my Mark II Leon in the description. So a couple of days later, the antenna arrived in the post and I left just two screws in the head unit and I left the trim off, just in the expectation that I'd be putting this antenna back into the car. So back to fitting the antenna, what I did was I wanted to mount it somewhere inside this area here. Obviously I wasn't going to run it up through the headlining into the back of the car. I wanted to have it in the dashboard somewhere close to the head unit itself. Now what you should do is you should remove this top part of the dash here where the heater controls are and we'll then see where it's mounted. And to remove this part, you just need to take two more torque screws out and then prise it off. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and for some reason, these are T20s and not T25s, which I've forgotten. Just make sure you keep these two separate from the other four. So just again, gently prise this bit of trim up around the edges with your fingers. And to get it fully off, just carefully undo the three multi plugs for the heater. Here's the normal GPS antenna connector that I've just left sitting at the back of the head unit, obviously not getting used anymore. Depending on the car you've got, just need to find a location somewhere to this, near to the top of the dashboard, somewhere safe and it's out of the way, and double-sided tape just to secure it in place so it doesn't fall off. And just make sure you don't trap the wire when you start fitting things back to the dashboard. I forgot to say as well, before I got it stuck in place, I just plugged it straight in and set it on top of the dash up here, outside so it had a clear view of the sky, and give it a few minutes, and yeah, it worked straight away. So, put this back together. So I understand this might not be the solution for every single GPS issue, but because it's the cheapest, I recommend you try it first before you do anything more expensive. Just make sure you check the picture of the connection of the item you're about to buy to make sure it's the correct connection for your car. The spider just hanging right there, casually photobombing my shot. Oh, and if you like the look of my nice shiny carbon effect dash, then click this video up here for more details about it. And below that is a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy as well. Don't forget to hit the like button as well if this video has helped you in some way or you found it useful. Also consider subscribing if you want to catch more videos like this in the future and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.